Good afternoon, Sifu. Hey, right, there we go. How you doing, buddy? All right, all right. We're good to go. Well, first, first, I'd like to say a few things, and you know, it's it's it, these people that are out there that uh, portray themselves or what they're not. Uh, no matter who it is, whether the names you name or not name, whatever, it, it, there's just no goddamn reason for it. Um, we as martial artists have to think above the, the, the fairy tales and all, all the other things that are being put out there because we're supposed to be men and women of honor. Exactly. Um, recently, um, there's been attacks on other people and such and such as myself, and uh, I do have to say as forcefully as I could say it, uh, <laughs> none of these facts are true because I'm an open book. Uh, right. Many people know I have a very good following of people. I, I'm a giver more than I'm a taker. And you're one person who knows the way I am. I mean, you and I have been together for years already. You know that exactly. you say something to me, I just say, oh, okay, no problem. I, I never go back on people to say, oh, you give me money. Because you know money is not a problem for me. I make money. I have six different businesses. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the martial arts is one-sixth of the business I'm in. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we all should make money and all should be very well adapted to what we do. But there's no reason to lie about your, your background. Exactly. Okay? Uh, there's mm -hmm. no reason to lie about your <laughs> fantasy um, story. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, uh, and he's been making. Some people up. said to me, "Well, some people has also said to me, why, why have uh, you, you've you know portrayed these people or what they are?" And I had to say because they take advantage of the public, and you may not see it directly, but when they start to you know sell certificates to their organizations or they start to you know they're part of this club or that club or whatever it is, it tends to you know be tainted by reality. Um, I'm a guy that I use the name Sifu Alan Goldberg, and I am a Sifu, and it's all on me. I am. Um, what does that mean? The most honorable title that we have as just the instructor, just like Sensei. Now, the other yeah. titles like Grandmaster and so that they're fine. But the real truth of the matter is that we don't need to do that anymore. Because exactly. there's some, think, think about it when you walk in a room and there's a thousand cows in the room and one donkey in the middle. Which are you going to see first? You're going to look at that donkey, not the thousand cows. Exactly. Okay. So when you see all the titles out there now, and again, I have no problem if someone calls himself Grandmaster, wherever it is. But the real truth of the matter is, why don't we go back to be the commonplace of being a sensei and a sifu and respect each other for all our, our prowls and all the, the good things we do in our martial art career? Uh, we, we, teach, we go out and we teach people that are, oh, I mean, how, I, I don't have to say this, but I guarantee most people that are listening train people and don't look for the dollar, okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. we have to pay rent. Yeah, we have to make a few dollars to, to feed ourselves a hamburger or a piece of pizza. But the truth of the matter is when you're involved with the martial arts so deeply, those things are, you know, secondary to the honor that we try to put together. So then again, going back to these people that do attacks and stuff like that, I say, listen, I'm not going to talk about them per I said names. Everyone knows who these people are. Just Google who they are. You're going to find 99 and 9 tenths of the information on these people as public record. Okay? If yeah. you find anything other than public record is usually what they put up. So I'm just saying, be smart. Don't, just don't be foolish. Use your common sense. Try to be a person that goes out there and says, Okay, well, this guy may call himself that, but I know he's not, okay? Um, I speak to people all the time. I can tell you I know the – and, again, you know, and a lot of people are listening, I know some of the biggest people in the martial art world and in the, in the motion picture world and everything else, and I don't bother with them unless they're good people. They have to have a good heart first. Okay? Exactly. I know that. I, I, know I, will, will, I will say a few things. And I will even say things about a gentleman uh, we named the Sheeta Kim. I like the Sheeta Kim. Okay, he's not. I thought he was. Pretty, I thought he was a pretty cool guy, and I enjoyed his company. But sometimes you're blinded by loyal blind uh, blindness. Uh, you're loyal to the wrong people, and I'm not asking people to say just take my side. Use the common sense of what you see. 
you can't right. take things that are put in front of you and, and just look away from it. You got to be forward. So, uh, you know, people, Ashita Kim's biggest thing was he thinks I was going to go after him and attack him. I wouldn't attack him. I wouldn't go after him. He's an older guy. I think he's got enough problems in his life. I don't need to be another problem in that life. But he's got to get smart. He's got to be smarter than the average person. Now, Bodie Sanders, uh, the only reason I had any gripe with him is because he attacked a very good friend of mine who was a woman. Uh, he attacked Stammer. me too. And so did right. Frank Dukes. He attacked a friend of right. mine, Donna Concita Keating. Very good friend. Yes. And he okay. and no reason. Now, you could stick up to her. Right. You could stick make... up for yourself, do it as a gentleman. Um, I, you know, I don't go on there and, and curse online and, and say things online that are negative and stuff like the, about their wives or their families or their friends and things like that, because that's not where you go with it. You know, you don't go that place. But, you know, again, Bodie Sanders, I always liked, I got along with him. But the real truth of the matter is he was attacking a gentleman called Al Baris. And this guy's family was a family man. And on the investigation, it was found out that this Al Baris was just a guy out there doing nothing except being attacked on. So when Dana had stuck up for him, uh, Dana Stamos, who's a wonderful, honest person, uh -huh. Dana went off and just, you know, brought out the truth about what was going on. And I'll tell you truthfully, he attacked her like it was terrible. And she actually had it put to bed, okay, where there was no more problems. And then he decided to go out and attack again, okay? That's why I went off and under my understanding is that I didn't want anything to do with Mr. Sanders anymore. Um, you can't attack a woman. I mean, he did, otherwise, and you're saying Donna got attacked, but Dana Stamos also got attacked. He called her an old lady, an old bitch, and so on, so on, so forth, whatever. I could say that on Facebook Live, but anyway. But <laughs> yeah, he said a lot of things. Yeah. Right. He said a lot of things you don't say to a lady. There's a, there's a, a part in this, in this world where you don't cross a line. Now, if you even send a woman something online that's controversial, she don't need to see this. I, I come from the old school. You don't curse at women. You don't you you don't say anything. Even you say, if he sent a threat to someone else and it got to, to her mailbox because he related it to her mailbox, you just don't do those things. Okay. Exactly. So I, I do have to say that it's time for people to wake up and just get away from that childish aspect of things in it. If you are who you are, you should have no problem proving and sticking up who you are. You know, people exactly. come to me and, I, and they ask who I am. I go, here's my phone number of my instructor. Been with him 47 years already. You want to speak to him? I make no claims. I'm no world champion. I will say I'm the best martial law promoter in the world. Because yes, I you are. That. that you are. Okay. And you're, you're in demand all over the country. Right. But I go off and I give. I'm more of a giver than I'm a taker. Okay. So when, when you see things out there, that go on and people say, oh, I'm a money hungry guy, whatever. Boy, let me tell you something. For 11 years, I ran my event and I lost my shirt. <laughs> I had <laughs> yes, I, I had bills. I mean, I lost one year $25,000. So if it does, my do take to what making some money is what it is. But people still don't realize that everything I did make went back to my magazine, the printing of my magazine. Uh -huh. Okay. A magazine, <laughs> think about it, advertising is not enough to cut to print a magazine and ship out thousands of copies all over the country and all over the world. So my event was the, the catalyst that brought my magazine to everybody. The Grassroot Magazine, which is now relaunched, almost 30 years old at this point. And I'm very proud of what we did that no one else did do. Now, not that I said they couldn't, but something that we did do. Now, then there's a controversy on something. And then I'm the first guy to talk about these things. I'm the first guy to say, they called me the Godfather. Why did they call me the Godfather? I never named myself the Godfather. Yes, I, 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 never tell, I never told anyone to call me the Godfather. They made a, a website up on Facebook. Uh, Spidey Steve made up a thing. He asked me and asked about 20 other celebrities to make up sites for them. The word Godfather just means leader of what they do. Okay, exactly. not so much a leader of the mafia, whatever it is. 
Now, I will say, I know people from all over every industry, from the federal government to guys that are not the nicest guys in the world, but I don't get involved with that. Okay. Right. Well, they don't know you grew up in that neighborhood, too, so that had something to do with them calling you there, because you grew up with these guys. You know these guys. It's no big right. deal. Right. Now, I, I grew up with these guys, but I don't get involved with them. They respect right. my, my territory and what I do. Exactly. Now. Same thing with the guys in the federal government. I know guys, the head of the DEA. I know guys that work in the DEA. I've got guys that work for the federal government every way you could think. I got the number four man in the FBI. is a very personal friend of mine. Um, yeah, I, I know people, but I don't push that down through people's throat. I don't mean brag about it other than what we're talking now or personally with somebody. But me is the name the Godfather was just put out there. If you want to say a joke or whatever it was, it's okay. I, I you know, I accept the name. Matter of fact, uh, Grandmaster Sanchez, we were talking about it because I really didn't like the title. And he goes, I No, know. no, bro, you got to You got to keep the title. You that is, you have to know that people will know you as that name. So I've taken it, but I never say hi. I'm Alan Goldberg, the Godfather of martial arts. I right. don't do that. So when people knock that, whatever, they're knocking themselves. If you go look at my disclaimer on my page tells you everything about that and what it means and where it came from. So, I mean, you're one of the guys who call me the godfather. And I look at you and I laugh. I go, oh, okay, whatever. Because you know it's not say. And I don't even care about my title. Call me Alan. I'm fine with Alan. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so, so you're running right. the largest, the world's largest martial arts event. event and uh, I got some questions about, uh, as a matter of fact, it was Frank, Duke, Frank Dukes about the vetting. Uh, the vetting mm -hmm. process, and I told him that we do vet our people. Sometimes mm -hmm. some people get through the cracks, and when you're Correct. dealing with mm -hmm. thousands of people, that happens. You can't you can't mm -hmm. always do a thorough background check on thousands of people. You can't no. do it. And so, especially when someone sends me something from someone else, I, I'll give you an instance. Let, let, let's get realistic about this. Okay. You're a buddy of mine. I love you. We became dear, dear friends. And I've become dear friends with so many people already that I appreciate the friendships that I built. I always tell people the martial art world has bought me something very special is the friendships that I've built. I've got a lot of friends and a lot of people support what I do. But the real truth of the matter is if you sent me a name, I don't go into the depth of it because I don't do the vending because you're my friend. You sent it to me that I have to believe what you're saying. Now, that doesn't mean the person fool, didn't fool you because you're saying, all right, I know the guy and whatever. So those are things some people do get through the, the cracks. But again, you got to know one thing. I don't give out titles like, you know, Grandmaster of the Year, Super imp Supreme, whatever. I don't run a Hall of Fame. I run a Hall of Honor. honor. I just honor people. Okay. Exactly. Now, you're at my event for years already, and you know, my event is not just about the banquet. We've got 15 events in one weekend. As a matter of fact, I just go down to we're working on a stick fighting tournament. Uh -huh. We have a full breaking tournament this year. We uh -huh. have a karate tournament. We have a jujitsu tournament, sports MMA, and a kickboxing show we're working on right now, open okay. to the public. Now, that's part of what we do. Not including the expo, the trade show, the breaking extravaganza, the Friday night parties, the Thursday night get together. Hey, this is not a hall of fame. It's a hall of honors honoring our guests and the people that come. And I tell people one thing. Me, you look at Alan Goldberg, I'm the only person in the room that is not equal to everyone else. I look at it as everyone in that room is damn equal. If you think you're bigger and better, leave it at home, stay home with your ego, don't come and hang out with us. We don't need you. But I will say the reason why I'm different is because I'm your servant for the weekend. Nothing more than your servant. Okay. Don't take advantage of that, but I'm nothing more than your servant. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I'm there to make sure you have a good way. time. Yeah. I'm there to make it sure you have a good time. And then when it happens in the long run, when I, I start everyone off equal, if you take things away from yourself don't blame me that you became a knucklehead all right <laughs> it's your fault and again you talk to me we had a couple of problems over the years with this guy or that guy or the other but yeah. the average out of you know literally 
God, maybe 40,000 people, 50,000 people have come through my front door over the years. Maybe we had four or five mishaps or people that I had problems with, okay? <laughs> because if you come to me and you say something, I try to make it happen, you know? Yes, you do. Go on. You, I know you had some other things. And what else you wanted to say? Well, I, I, I wanted to expand on that a little bit. You've got 20,000 people, uh, I mean, 2,000 people, in, and you've got so many people, you've got so many events going on, so many of the biggest true martial artists, Cynthia Rothrock, uh, uh, Simon Cook, you, you've got the biggest uh, martial artists in the business that come to the show. Yes. And because we have a few uh, fakes that have printed, and it's, in this day and age, it's so easy to make your own certificate and try to promote yourself. Oh, yeah. And some of them do that. And when they mm -hmm. present that to you uh, or me, uh, as you say, they present something to me. Well, are you certified? Who was your teacher? And it actually just made me a little more apprehensive about their right. uh, credentials. Now. And, mm -hmm. and I ask, who was your teacher? And can I check with your teacher? And if they give me a little bit of a hesitation, or some some kind of line, then I know. But mm -hmm. most of these stuff, they, these guys, they get a lot of these even teachers now. They're going online and they're doing, um, they're giving just giving them out, selling them, uh, the certificates, yeah. and they yeah. don't know anything. I mean, I, I I won't mention a name, but I got a call from a gentleman a while ago saying that someone was going around some names that we talk about was selling them ranked at their organizations for two hundred and fifty dollars. And I have it all in writing with the names on it and everything else. So the proof of the matter is there. And the gentleman didn't accept it because he felt it just wasn't worth his time or his money or whatever. But this is ridiculous. If you didn't train with someone, how do you expect to get a certificate from somebody? Be real. Imagine if we all went back to just being calling ourselves martial artists. Yes, I teach martial yeah. arts. Yes. That's, that's all it's about. And I want to be able to honor people to come to my event have a good time. It, it, my event is more like a convention. As a matter of fact, I, this year I was putting up the word called, the, the, the nickname called The Convention for Martial Arts. Uh -huh. uh, because we've opened up doors that no one else has opened. We've done things that no one else did. But it's not me. It's everybody that comes to my event. It's part of it. Every person that comes. When I have the Marine Corps come out and we, we respect the flag. When I have Dr. Willette come out and he does... Uh, the, the whole thing with the prayer and blesses everyone. When everything's done, the pr Friday night parties, I got guys, Carrie Tagawa, Vincent Pestere, uh, Chuck Zito, uh, Cynthia, Don Wilson, Benny the Jet, uh, mm -hmm. Michael Jai White, Bill Wallace. I'm sorry if I left anyone out, but we got the biggest array of real celebrity martial artists, and we have more coming this year. Yes. So, you know. We're just here to make everyone happy. If you're not happy, I apologize for not making you happy. Let me know. I could make it make it better for you. I, you know, people don't even know. They, they have no idea how many free dinners I even give away every year. Because guys come to me. Ah, Sifu. They just can't get to the situation where they have the money. So I said, listen, come to the event. I'll take care of you. I may not be able to give you a award or anything, but come down enjoy the weekend of the expo and trade show and just have a good time. And the real truth of the matter, if I tell you what I give away is more than what some people pay for the whole event for a weekend, that's how much I give away. So yeah, you know, Mr. Goldberg, uh, you're making all this money, whatever. Now, what do you think? You know, I got great staff, great friends, great people, just lovely, lovely, reactions in people matter of fact i was on the phone with donna today okay okay and she's just such a sweet woman she doesn't want any problems with anyone and i said to her, just sit back relax i says ignore all the knuckleheads ignore all the grief all the problems and you know some if we can get rid of these people and this is how you get rid of them just ignore them that's you know? exactly what i said room, don't give them that attention if we give them that right. attention and then they're going to uh, they, that brings other the legitimate martial artists to pay attention to them too. And I, got, I, got, I, see, I see all these wonderful people up online now, so many great you know supporters. And I gotta say, guys, it's not my event anymore. It's your event. Exactly. As much as I'm part of it, it's your event. You walk in the door. I have guys come to me all the time, and I swear to God, you can ask. 
tons of people, I'll give you names. They say, Alan, I need a room for the weekend to do something for my event. If I have it, I give them. I turn over. I just had to walk on the Joe Lewis team this year. They wanted to do something special for their event this year. I gave them a room to do whatever they want. I didn't charge them for the room. They got it free. And you want to know something? This year, they're bringing triple the amount of people to the event. All right? We have working with people that, that are involved with the, the, the Olympic Committee this year for kickboxing. We have so many wonderful mm -hmm. things happen. So people that come off with this you know, idea that they're not involved with, you could be involved. Just exactly. call me, say, Alan, let's get together. Look, can, can I do something? I've got phone calls lined up. I don't even get to have them until a couple of days later because I literally have hundreds of emails of people from all over the world, 30 countries come to this event because we want to do the right thing. Exactly. But if you're not involved and you're listening in, feel free to contact me or all that, you know, that is call him because, hey, he's a, uh, a guy that knows everything I'm doing and has you know, access to me, you know, I wouldn't say 24 hours a day, but he has access to me pretty, pretty equal. If I don't, you call me, I get back to you within, you know, a day. So. Exactly. Exactly. And and I want you guys to know that this is our 20th anniversary and we're, we're right. just, this is going to be a great, uh, this is going to be a, a, one of our biggest bashes. So we want you, you to guys get me worried though. Everyone's talking about my 20th, and I go, I go, what are you doing special? And I look, I go, I don't know. Yeah, I do. <laughs> but anyway, but, you know, people, the expectation is unbelievable. We have, we've already sold 20 tables to the banquet already. Wow. Okay. And, I, I you know, I, I put something out very, very plain and simple. There are a lot of people doing events out there that don't agree with their ethics and things they do. I'm not saying don't go to their event. You want to go, go. All I'm saying is, don't expect the invitations to my event because we try to keep unethical aspects out of our event. If there are problems, this is the first thing I cut out. Okay. You want to go to other events? Feel free. We just don't want to bring the drama to our event. That's what it comes down to. Exactly. And and if that, and, that kind of behavior, we see it in other events and we see that you're doing other things. Don't expect to be welcome at our event because you're not going to do that. We don't, we don't allow it. But this is our yep. 20th anniversary, and it's going to be the biggest and the best of all. So we want you all to come out and join us. Yeah, we got some other guests from The Sopranos coming in. Uh, we have I'm working on Randy Couture right now. Uh, we're actually doing our next cover with my partner, Mr. Torres. We're doing the cover on Billy Blanks. A lot of names people haven't seen in a long time, but Billy's coming on a whole new program. Uh, okay. Doing It's a boxing program. And we're, you know, we're out there to help everyone. We're, we're going to help Billy do what he can with his new program. And yeah. uh, matter of fact, we'll be in Chicago this weekend doing a whole push. We have uh, KJ from the Waco team out there doing a whole program within this weekend. So there's some great things happening. We got a lot of new people, but this, here's the best part. 90% mm -hmm. of our people come back every year. Why is that? Because they have something special that they're a part of, not just what I'm pushing. They're part of what we do. So, you know, I love you all. I want everyone there. Smile. You may see me running through my event, and I may not have time to talk to you, and I just shake your hand quickly, but it's no disrespect given. I'm just a madman my weekend. I'm like a computer going 100 miles an hour. <laughs> uh, they don't understand. You're here, and you're there, and you're trying to keep everything going. It's a big, big event. So yeah, we, we're doing it. In, the Tropicana is five city blocks. And we use a whole floor within the Tropicana, all right? And we get thousands of people coming through the doors every year. We want to make everyone happy. I may never be able to sit there and have a drink with everyone, but I'll give you a hug when you see me. There's no problem with that. <laughs> yes. So um, thank you all for tuning in. And we'll be back uh, next week with another broadcast. Uh, we're looking to interview Sonny Singh. So join me. On the Thunder. Uh, Sonny's a great guy. He'll be at the event this year, too, bringing some people from Bollywood. Sonny's a great guy. Thank you, and sir. And Dennis, I have to say something. So are you, man. I love you. You know you're a great person. Thank you, sir. And you're the, gre you're the greatest. <laughs> My godfather. So we want you guys to come in and join us for this 20th anniversary. It's going to be the biggest bash. Join me next week for my interview with Sonny Singh. Uh, coming in from Hollywood and Bollywood. Um, until next week, you guys have a great day and have a great weekend.